The FCC has at last approved SpaceX's application for Starlink usage on vehicles in motion, including boats, RVs, airplanes, and more. So what does this mean? And, well, can you start using Starlink on the go? Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, here to give you an exciting update on SpaceX's Starlink. This is SpaceX's massive constellation of satellites designed to bring low-latency, high-speed broadband service to the world, well, anywhere in the world without too many trees, that is. So the big news here is that SpaceX has finally gotten approval from the FCC to deploy Starlink onto vehicles in motion, or specifically what the FCC refers to as Earth Stations in Motion, or eSIM, not to be confused with the kind of eSIM that you find in phones. So Starlink eSIM is Earth Stations in Motion, and the SpaceX actually first filed for this um, last summer, so summer of 2021, and they filed for a new mobile version of the Starlink Dishy receiver with a few um, modifications to make it better suited for use on vehicles. And there's been a lot of back and forth because the FCC has never approved this kind of system before, so there was a lot of things to be worked out. And just yesterday, at the end of the month, June 30th, 2022, the FCC finally had all its questions answered and said yes to SpaceX, but with a few important conditions. So SpaceX now has permission to deploy Starlink onto vehicles, vehicles in motion, including airplanes, boats, RVs. Um, the license extends to any U.S. territories and into international waters. So this actually opens the door for SpaceX to finally officially start to offer service in, to cruisers who are going between continents, which could be absolutely revolutionary. But the um, FCC uh, terminology, the FCC license, did have a lot of uh, caveats that SpaceX has 30 days to choose to whether to agree to or not. And the biggest comes down to the um, 12 gigahertz spectrum. What we did a story on early this week, the spectrum, the portion of the spectrum that SpaceX is using for downlink from Starlink and that DISH network wants to repurpose to use for 5G cellular. And the FCC has said that this this ruling in favor of Starlink, they're, they're denying DISH's request to block Starlink being mobile. So DISH lost a big one there but they are not ruling yet on whether or not DISH will be able to use this 12 gigahertz spectrum of FAR 5G, and SpaceX needs to actually start warning customers that got buy into Starlink eSIM that this there is a potential for future interference. Now, this is not the end of the world because the, um, 12, the band in question is 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz, and well, that is definitely a band that SpaceX is using and DISH wants to use, but SpaceX is also using for downlink and has license for 10.7 to 12.2. So basically the FCC is putting SpaceX on notice saying you have to let customers know about potential future interference, you can't cause any future interference, and we are still pending our rules on that part of the frequency band. So that is one of the conditions SpaceX is going to have to agree to, is to warning people about that potential future interference. and acknowledging that they might not be allowed to use that part of the spectrum band in the future and they need to design Starlink eSIM systems to not require that chunk of spectrum. So we'll see how that plays out. So well, can you get this? You know, will current Starlink systems work with Starlink in motion? Well, we already know that they sort of do technically work. You know, people have been modifying Starlink systems, um, disabling the aiming motors, mounting them flat, and have had a lot of good success putting them in use in motion. But that is not what is being authorized here by the current license. Uh, this new current license is for a new class of devices, the new Starlink eSIMs, and now that, well, now that SpaceX has a license, they presumably will be very quick to announce this new type of hardware. And we know there's already been kind of pilot projects in the works with uh, airlines to do Starlink service onto airplanes. Uh, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines actually did a test of Starlink on one of their cruise ships. And certainly those big kind of commercial markets are going to be one of the initial targets. But both the FCC and SpaceX have been mentioning RVs and boats frequently. So we expect that there will be a Starlink mobile system for RVers and for cruisers that will be different than the current Starlink residential slash portable slash RV system, something designed for full-time in-motion usage. 
Now, what that actually is and what it will cost, we do not know yet. We'll have to wait for SpaceX to take advantage of this license and actually announce it. And we also do not know whether they will have the same service plans for in-motion mm -hmm. usage. They might choose to charge extra for mobility and particularly for international waters. Um, the, the market there is so expensive right now for uh, satellite data that SpaceX might try to be you know, only undercut the current competition by an order of magnitude and not two orders of magnitude. So there might be a more expensive service for, for cruising as well. We'll have to wait and see, but even at the high end of what is likely, it will still probably be a revolutionary thing for cruisers um, to at last have a relatively small, relatively affordable uh, satellite system that works in the middle of the ocean and gives you streaming speeds and video conferencing capabilities. So there's an exciting future ahead. It is a big deal that this license has finally been approved. As I said, SpaceX has 30 days to decide whether they want to accept the terms that the FCC is putting on them, but it seems like it is mostly a big win for SpaceX, and we are excited to see what comes next, so stay tuned. This is a pretty revolutionary. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.